with uh, another episode of, of Real Entrepreneur Podcast. And today's conversation is going to be a, a little bit outside of the box. It's, we're going to be thinking like putting ourselves two, three years, four years in the future, but also something that's taking place right now that's really important. And this is a topic um, that uh, that came up last time I talked to uh, Frank Kluzix, who happens to be my guest speaker here today, um, to join me in my podcast to talk about this topic. And I'm going to steal his term just to open up the conversation, um, calling being pl he, what he called being platformed um, in, in 2021 and beyond, and how how what a mistake that can be long term for our business. And um, it's a uh, it's a very important topic. So Frank, I just want to just you know quickly 30 seconds. I know most people probably know you, but 30 seconds about yourself, and then let's go right into this topic of being platformed. Uh, and, and describe what that means and why that can be a, a deadly mistake for agents moving forward. Yeah. Um, I started a company out of college where we interview you on a webcam to create educational videos to help you stay in touch with your database. I've been doing that for about 11 years now. We have 50 employees and uh, we help people stay in touch with the number one business asset, which is their list. It's your past clients, it's your sphere, it's your leads. And I think we all know you got to have some type of way to nurture them. And when I started the company, it was really popular since a bunch of canned drip emails, like write the whole year up front and drip mm -hmm. out a bunch of like canned material. And just as the, as the years and month years go on, that is just falling more and more out of style where it needs to be a little more you on video, a little more relevant and unique. Yeah. And that's what our firm does. And one of the things that we I've always shared was, is um, you're really in two businesses. You're in the lead generation business and you're in the business of actually delivering the service. And he or she who controls the leads controls the business. Simple as that. And if you look at, you know, real estate and professional services at large, uh, home contractors, CPAs, attorneys, um, there's a rush to platform you. What I mean by that is someone else is creating the marketplace, not you. Yeah. And someone else is doing the lead generation and not you. Mm -hmm. And now you're a surf on someone's land. It's a modern day feudalism where you know you used to have to work on someone who owns land yeah the new land is who controls the leads the new oh. land is yeah i mean think about that I yeah mean, you used to be so stuck true. on someone's land yeah. yeah so so the new land the new feudal system is who controls the leads and you if someone else that. controls the leads you're going to be toiling away yeah paying your tithing to the landowner because you never really own anything. And the reality is the only thing to own in a professional service is a brand, is the culture of your company and uh, what they would call goodwill on a balance sheet, which is probably your database yeah. of people that will actually use you. Right. That's why, it's why Coca-Cola sells for such huge premiums because there's this line item on their balance sheet of what they think Coca-Cola is worth as a brand, <laughs> right? So when you're selling the intangible and you're selling a professional service, um, databases, it's, yeah. What, what, why, when, when, when a, when a venture capital company comes in or you're looking to sell your business or you go to a business broker, they're going to look at first and foremost, they're probably going to talk to the head of sales and they're going to say, you know, do you control your supplies? Do you control the way you get clients? Mm. And if you're getting all your clients from Zillow, you're basically their employee. If you're getting all of your referrals from where you paid on a referral commission, you're basically their employee. I mean, they're going to come in if you take a Zillow offer or a Zillow deal. They're going to say, you got to use our CRM. We're going to hand you the lead. You're going to have ridiculous reporting requirements. We're going to babysit you nonstop. You know what I mean? Mm. That's not freedom. Mm -hmm. That's not business freedom. Mm -hmm. So I guess that the topic of the conversation today, and I really like that. It's like, you know, think about feudalism, medieval times. Yeah. The, the serfs would toil on the land to landowners. The new landowners are the ones that control the marketplace, the platform where it leads. That's and if you're on those platforms, you don't have it, you're a surf. It's like a it's like a digital, it's like um it's digital land basically right it's basically it's like in and you you know look at what's happening with currency right now with digital currency right so i mean there's a lot of debate around that we don't need to get in there with like cryptocurrency but there's you know 
there's you could you could say well you know the leads are like digital it's like digital the digital world digital land and to your na- analogy um and that's the way the world's going so another way to look at it is is you're putting somebody in toll position okay for um access to the customer so mm-hmm. every time you want access to the customer you have to pay a toll <laughs> and you're, you're you're on a toll road yeah. You know what I mean? right. And it's really so, hard to build a business when every time you want access to the yeah. audience or every time you want access to the customer, you have to pay someone else's toll. Yeah. And it's interesting because I feel like people are, I feel like they're, that um, you look at a lot of vendors and services that are, that are helping real estate professionals and the, the, that real estate professional, that team leader, I think they're waking up to how important their database really is. In a lot of ways, and it's funny because you've been in this niche for how long? Yeah, my whole professional life. Yeah, your whole professional life, and you've been saying this for how long? Are you seeing that trend? Is that or yeah? My perception. Well, I'll tell I'll tell you this. I mean, last March and April, I think we took like a a freak out of a third of our clients just left Mm. because nobody wanted to take. They were just cutting expenses. Everyone was getting ahead of it. I mean, it was just a meltdown. Yep. You know, I was laying people off. It was just a. Yeah, we had a they, needed, they, they, they needed to do something or else like yeah. it would just been a snowball but then it stabilized probably around may mm-hmm. i felt it kind of stabilizing out mm-hmm. and then come june it's like oh damn <laughs> I, get what like, I, I gotta do something like, yeah. yeah and what was really interesting at that time while we had a lot of people leaving our firm our signups stayed consistent if not ticked up in March and April, same thing happened. I was like, I was like, I was like, really? Yeah. People are coming in and giving us all this money yeah. at a time when all these people are leaving. I'm like, that's interesting. Yeah. And we spoke with um, the customers, and here's what we heard. We heard was, um, hey, a lot of my business was doing like client appreciation events. Can't do it. A lot of my business was maybe door knocking. Can't do it. Um, hey, I. I threw in the towel buying referral leads or buying leads. I mean, these couple thousand dollar a month Facebook PPC leads. I'm just, this COVID thing, just like canceled that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, the whole, I, I got to hire an ISA for yeah. a grand or two a month. I got to pay all the Facebook. They, they take two years to convert, yep. right? Um, a lot of people were leaving that and they were going, okay, what, what do I have left? Well, I basically have me calling and pounding phones. Mm-hmm. but I got to have some leverage than just being the phone. Like what else can I get? That's not too expensive. And a lot of it is, is uh, yeah. creating some content, creating some webinars, creating some right. videos, using sure. email, using Facebook, using digital media, mm-hmm. not so much to throw up online to magically get found, but to push it out to your warmest contacts, mm-hmm. which are the people on your list. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting. Cause the same thing we have, we have two different divisions with our company. One is inside sales division and our, our other division is largely database marketing focused um, using, using automation and um, text message campaigns and artificial intelligence. And the, that we saw that trend. We saw people getting, we, our ISA division got hammered like during that period of time. And then it stabilized right around June. And we saw, but we saw more people saying, oh my gosh, like I have to do something with my day database right now yeah and i think it's i think it's yeah. where you always go back when like yeah the euphoria of easy money and easy sales weans off right so you kind of retreat back to like okay where is the foundation here of everything is built mm-hmm. and it's on those relationships and it's really easy man i mean when you're doing business and you're doing leads and you can just buy some quick leads offline <laughs> right or, you know you don't have to go through all that work but yeah when when yeah. Cause I always wondered at our firm, like we started our company back in like 2009, mm-hmm. 10. So we just started kind of like in the trough of like the great recession then. Right. And it's pretty much been a, you know, a, uh, a, a run up for the best good 10 ride, years. Yeah. 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 Good ride for 10 years. And I always talked to my business partner, John, who started the firm with me. I was like, I wonder how, you know, viral would um, run in like a recession or right. run in a low inventory market. Right. Like we're seeing now, or, you know, we get clobbered or we do well and business is ticking back up, back up to where we started. And um, it is a very low inventory market. I was talking to somebody in Phoenix mm-hmm. yesterday. They said um, uh, last year at this time, they would have 25,000 listings on the market. 
and currently there's 5,000. Oh my gosh, that's insane. So there, there should be 25,000 homes for sale this time last year. And right now there's 5,000 homes here. Now, what I hear is I hear a giant game of musical chairs of real estate agents yep. because yep. Um, that's just a lot less commission money sloshing around the system. Mm-hmm. You know, So I think what happened is in the summer of last year, we borrowed into a lot of that. Mm-hmm. Like we basically like borrowed into 2021 with all these transactions. And I don't know, man, I, we'll see, but maybe we'll pay the price this year of just not so much for sale. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, it's... Um... It's interesting, and, and then you right because the homeowner that wants to buy also needs to sell first a lot of times. So yep. then, they, then they don't sell <laughs> because yep. they need to buy first, and it just creates yep. this. This well, I think I think deal. it's going to create a huge market for bridge loans. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah. uh, there's Homeward run by uh, my friend Tim Heil. Mm-hmm. There's uh, Knock is one of them. Mm. I could see a lot of uh, brokerages offering a bridge loan where it's like, look. Um, you know, sell your home to us. We'll, we'll lease it back to you. And then we'll, uh, let you make an all cash non-contingent offer, which is what you need now Yeah. to go buy your next house. And then you can time the moving date smoothly. That, wow. That's an interesting niche right there. Yeah. Those are, that's the bridge. That's the, that, that's yeah. the, uh, that's the trade-in program. Rich yeah. Barton call Rich Barton calls it at, uh, Zillow one click Nirvana. <laughs> where somebody can click a button and they trade in their home to someone else and they trade up and it's all beautiful right but but there's a lot of but i say that man i mean there's i mean billions and billions of dollars yeah going into like it's being happened. able to create that type of consumer yeah. experience and i think I, lot, I think blockchain technology is going to enhance that, that yeah if, if you're a real estate agent Right now, one your 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 main objection beside why do I need you as a realtor in a hot market? Yeah, your main objection is going to be is uh, I have no place to move, and like I don't want to stand outside with thirty other people in a yeah. bidding situation on a house. Like shoot me in the head, yeah. right? That sounds terrible. Then I'm going to overpay for the home. I'm going to get emotional. The yeah. sellers want a closing date at a super inconvenient time, and I haven't even sold my house yet. Right. And I'm going to be homeless. So what about the moving? It's just like, oh my God, this is, this is terrible. Yep. And I think someone that comes along that offers some type of bridge loan product, product mm-hmm. well, is going to directly solve that homeowner pain point. And it gives an agent like a real USP and then just like, you know, the, t- the typical, I'll yeah. take pictures of your home, but it's sign in the yard. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a really good idea. Agents who are, who are watching this, you know, the, write that down. I, I just did for our brokerage. Um, that's a really great USP. That's a really, really strong. Yeah, we can help you buy before you sell. Yep. Um, I think the other USP is I'll help you understand all of your options. You know, hey, um, there's investors that can buy your home. There's instant offers to buy your home. Um, I can arrange an off-market sale. Yeah. Uh, retail. We could do open houses. Uh, you know, when's the last time you sold a home? A lot's changed. Right. And uh, I'm holding a workshop or I'm teaching a seller workshop to teach you all of your options. We can play list it or flip it. Where <laughs> play the game. Do you list it or flip it? That's great. We're a real estate investor and the agent compete for the best option for you. That's awesome. That you is, know? That is awesome. So I think like helping people understand all their options, you know, um, there's a so, lot of agent. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, I just I just want to go back just a couple steps. The platform here. question, yeah. Yeah, and and how do you how do they get unplat? You know, how do they how do they get un unplatformed? I, well, I think first is just having an awareness is yeah. that you don't control your business. Is yeah. that you're basically a glorified employee. Mm-hmm. You're you're an employee in disguise, mm-hmm. and um, a lot of these companies are really pushing the line when it comes to independent contractor employee deals. Mm-hmm. But um. Is understanding that you are platformed is that you're you you are held hostage, you are tied up in a quarter, in a hostage situation from a lead provider. <laughs> now that lead provider can take many forms. The assailant mm. can take many forms. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> this, could, this is a good metaphor. Um, uh, it could be Facebook, of um, deciding to lock out your account, or deciding to. Um, uh, you know, I'm not gonna let you run your ads anymore because you change your algorithms or Apple changes their, this big Apple thing where 
privacy now, right? Oh, yep. it could be a, it could be a Google pay per click that um, you know some someone comes along and spends more per click and drives up your costs, or Google changes their algorithm like the Penguin update back in the day. If you ever asked the Zoom link, it yep. could be um, it could be telemarketing. It could be uh, do not call laws and getting sued for TCPA violations yeah. using auto dialers, right? Yep. You have um, obviously the Zillows and the Realtor.coms where they generate the lead and the brand loyalty is to them and not you. Mm. Um, they, I, 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 I read an article about someone calling it the Home Depot effect, and he basically the story was is um, you know he was at Home Depot, he was shopping, and he's like, I need someone to install this thing about thing about digging in my house. So uh, Home Depot had the preferred providers with the Home Depot deep in it, uh, Home Depot stuff. So he hired one of the providers. Now when they showed up, they were obviously independent contractors, but he didn't look at them as their own business. It was like, this is, they work for Home Depot. They're licensed or approved or screened from Home Depot. And the relationship was with Home Depot. It wasn't with the, the, the provider that came out. Do you follow yeah. me? Yeah. And uh, when the provider messed up because it was their own business, he blamed Home Depot, right. which forced, forced the hand of Home Depot to get into the business, which is exactly what you're seeing with Zillow yeah. is, you know, Spencer Raskoff was saying like, hey, half the leads I send to the premier agents don't even get called. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, what do you guys want me to do? Like, yeah. they're all yelling at me. Yeah. Like, I have to get in the lead follow business. Yeah. And then when I pass your leads, you guys drop the balls. Like his, right. his biggest asset and the biggest liability of Zillow is the agent. Yeah. So it started as a media p- platform where they wanted to just send leads over to agents. But because the agents were ruining the Zillow brand so much, they had to get more into the business. Yeah. And, and, and what, what you realize, cause I've on a much smaller scale, but um, I've, I've experienced that starting off with my brokerage. Then I, then I launched an inside sales division thinking that was going to solve a problem for my brokerage and eventually for clients. And then there's still a follow-up problem. Even, even when the, even when the ISA puts the appointment in their hand, there's still a problem with working that leader the right way and following yeah. up with it the right way for it to be converted for that lead to have a good experience. And, and that's ultimately what it comes down to. And that's why Jeff Bezos runs the world yeah. is that's the customer, ex- customer experience. And yeah. the elephant, the elephant in the room is at least in real estate. And I know we're getting out the platform conversation, but you're trying to insure, ensure a custom, a consistent customer experience yeah. and lead experience, with independent contractors where you cannot exert that control. Yeah, and I think that I think I think that's that's the big thing that needs to be talked about is yeah. switching to switching probably to a W two model if you really wanted to yeah. put the consumer experience first because you just can't do it legally with the level of insight and inspection and supervision and teamwork right. well, as an independent I, contract I, relationship. I firmly believe, and I've been talking to a lot of colleagues, is that we're going to see more of a movement towards that where you have in cer- certain areas and pockets where you have teams start creating that environment um, or brokerages start creating that environment. I'm already starting to test that right now, um, that that W-2 model, because I you know one of the reasons why I stay in the business is because I don't want to, I never want to be just somebody who offers um, a platform that doesn't use it myself. And so I try to stay in the business with our brokerage and we experience these, these same things is um, yeah. one of the things I've been training a lot about is your, your traditional sales funnel, so to speak, talks about generating a lead and getting a transaction where to me, um, if you're going to truly scale a, 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 spe- a business that's special, you've got to look at the whole picture and that's marketing, sales, and service. And even though that's common sense and to a lot of people, I don't, I, I think that the, the next biggest UVP or USP, Frank, is going to be experience. It's going to be the 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 team that can provide the best experience for that oh, client. That's, that's always what's going to win. That's yeah, that's that's the win. that's what cuts. Ca- over time, capitalism rewards that. Yeah. The sheer economics of it. But, but get back to your question because we're just getting off topic. Yeah. Is what does an agent do when they're platformed? Yeah. And they realize this. Well, first is to realize it is yeah. that you're held hostage by someone else, and you're on someone else's platform, and you're a surf on someone's land. That yep. you could be a surf to right. Facebook, you could be a surf to yep. uh, the phone laws, you could be a surf to Realtor and Zillow, all these different sources, and that's not bad if you're if you under if you play the game where it's like okay, I'll get my leads this way. They're going to be expensive, mm-hmm. 
but I'm going to take that lead, put it into my database and factor in the lifetime value of it, where the referrals and repeat business comes from it. That's where I make my profit. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. The second way is you have to invest in some other, other um, highways, so to speak, where there's no toll. <laughs> Maybe yeah. build some other yeah. highways. We don't have to pay toll position. Multiple, and, multiple channels. You know, yeah, and there's and there's and there's a lot of those. I'll, I'll go through a couple that are that are pretty popular that mm -hmm. work well. Um, first is you know rounding up everyone in your Gmail and your Outlook and everyone that you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know load them into an email marketing account. Start sending a couple helpful educational emails out a month. Uh, throw those people into Facebook. Run some ads to them to stay in touch. And then run them through one of these likely to sell companies. Uh, there's lots of them. Uh, one that we uh, we're going to be probably doing a partnership with is likely.ai. Mm -hmm. You go over to them, upload your list, and they'll run them through a statistical algorithm or behavior data to figure out who's likely to sell. Yep. And you start and you start, you know, working that list in some way, specifically your past sure. clients and sphere. Yep. And then, you know, it sounds like a company like yours can go on and take all those leads and start texting them and going deeper and calling them to yeah. find out who's yeah, going to convert. Are. We have a system, yeah. where we have REN actually, we call it REN scoring. It sounds a lot like likely to move um, where that's one of the layers of service that we offer. So mm -hmm. it's a extremely- Yeah, it takes your list and it runs it through an algorithm and says, hey, there's there might be something going on in this person's life yeah. based upon, I don't know, their iPhone location, the websites they're going to, their credit card <laughs> transactions, you know, all the stuff with the terms. Seven, of there's there's 700 different point, data points. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was reading Axiom has uh, 5,000. I know it's insane. So Axiom, Axiom. If you go check out Axiom, has uh, five thousand yeah. data points, and every American to do all the slice and dice lists for consumer behavior. But anyways, is looking at your database. The, the second thing, honestly, is you have to start looking to teaching workshops. Mm -hmm. um, is 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 this is not very common in real estate. It's extremely common in financial services, but teaching investing, teaching um, first the first time home buyer, um, teaching home selling workshops. Um, those are wonderful. And you put them on there. It's your platform, right? You invite a co-host, you invite guest speakers. Mm -hmm. They all email their lists to your platform, which is the workshop. Yep. Follow me. Yep. And that's a, that's a really easy way for people where it's like, Hey, I don't, Frank, I don't have any money. What do I do? Yeah. And I don't want to slog away <laughs> pounding cold calls, bro. <laughs> like, please God, can someone yeah. give me a different option than that? Yeah. And I know it works. I get it. But please, I don't want to be doomed to doing that. What else do I got? Well, I'm like, well, you got database mm -hmm. and you have putting on webinars or workshops where you bring in guest speakers and they all mail their list to your registrations, which is something you're really good at, Isaiah. I mean, you put on events and you get, mm -hmm. you know, you bring in speakers from the industry and they all mail their list to get people there. So you're not, you know, just a slave to Facebook for the, for the registrations. Yeah, we, um, and we use that same model for our brokerage. It's funny you bring up events because we're, we have a huge push. We have a huge push um, on doing online events, uh, and and just like you'd run an in-person uh, buyer seminar or seller seminar, and just like you'd in, uh, you'd invite your mortgage, uh, your lead mortgage person, your insurance guy uh, to come yeah. join you or sponsor it, um, you can do the same thing online and it can be just as effective. And we just did one for our brokerage, and we had um, we did a we did a two segments. The first part was for sellers, the second part was for buyers. We had almost a hundred. Uh, homeowners show up to it and um it was so powerful and then uh the follow-up was phenomenal the relationship was there and frank you're right on point um that that is you know a serious, I mean, a serious it's 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 one of the first things you can do to get deplatformed. yep <laughs> right. right and then uh, and then i would say i would say it's your database right that you're we're talking about databases well yeah we're, we're working your existing yeah. list Right. Right. Going yeah. deeper in that than throwing right. workshops. workshops. I'll give I'll give one more the third yep. one in order. Are yep. you ready? Yep. It's gonna be direct mail. Mm. It's gonna be direct mail. Mm. Direct mail is the most democratic, most American form of media. Right. <laughs> let me let me let me tell you why. First off, I don't have to worry about out anyone outbidding me on the price of a stamp. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> don't have to worry about it. I also don't have to worry about the post office opening my mail going, hmm, what's our policies today, given the political situation and yep. privacy concerns? You know what? I'm not going to deliver this piece of mail. I'm going to say I'm going to throw it back and say I'm not going to run it. Right. I don't got to worry about that. Right? right. Like texting and cold calling yeah. and direct voice. And, you know, all these things. And, yeah. oh, uh, we're going to change the laws and we're going to reinterpret the 1991 TCPA 
right. <laughs> on what the capacity of an auto dialer is. So right. if I send, if I make some auto dialed call or I send some yeah. mass text, I get like a multi million dollar lawsuit because they subpoena yeah. all my texts and all my calls. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about that because I can mail you. If you That's call right. me and say, stop mailing me, if you call me and say, don't mail anywhere, I, I don't have to <laughs> listen to it because the mailbox is government property. You don't own it. Yeah. That's so true. Right. So I don't and have to worry about getting sued. That's you know, I, I don't have it. to worry about privacy issues. So when I, and I on, on top of that, I can slice and dice a direct mail list with all so different types of criteria. So and all ways. I have to do, and I can write one letter. I say, yeah. I can write one letter and mail the same letter over and over. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is um, I, I if you're using direct mail, I would not consider uh, the postal system uh, being on someone's land. And if you're, if you're, a, if, you're an REM, if you're an REM client, um, just to let you know, we, we believe a hundred percent in what Frank is saying. And within a matter of, if you're listening to this podcast, within a couple of weeks, you're going to see a new application go up on our dashboard called run postcards where cool. you're going to be, where you're going to be able to, we're going to be able to click a button and um, and then sync your database with the postcard campaign and automate the whole thing right from the dashboard because we believe 100% in what what uh, Frank is saying um, and and so just be on the lookout for for run it'll be run postcards it'll be at the top of your dashboard. Cool. So cool. Yeah, so Frank, that's this awesome. Been, yeah, this is that was a perfect that was a perfect I, I had to make that announcement anyway so that was a perfect segue yeah. <laughs> to to kind of wrap up this podcast and you know one of the things I. Uh, I really appreciate about your, your approach, Frank, is you, there's a lot of people in this industry. Um, see, I can tell you're always researching, you're always masterminding, and you're always trying to bring uh, the best insights and information to the, to your sphere, to the, you know, which, which I'm thankful to be a part of your sphere. And, um, and so if you are listening to this podcast and you have a, a void when it comes to video marketing and database, um, there's no better company than viral marketing to reach out to. Thank you, man. And uh, so just, just take, and if you're on our dashboard, if you're a client, click on his app, click on the viral application or the, the app there, the tile. And, yeah, check and you'll get a check copy of the video marketing plan. So I'm going to send that right to a copy of the official video marketing plan to get business from your list. And I've seen that I've seen that plan and I've used, I've, I've actually used that plan to say, oh my gosh, this is what our brokerage is missing. Like you, you that that plan is awesome. I, Thank you, man. It's Appreciate really that. awesome. And and you've come, you came up with that plan years ago, and I think eleven, year, was, 11 years ago. That, that was, plan was that, so that far was ahead the, of its time. And it's that was still, the plan I wanted for my own real estate business that I was yeah. going to get into out of college. And yeah. I just realized that maybe that is a um, that's something you could do for a living. Yeah, that plan that plan was so far ahead of its time, and it's still hundred percent relevant today. So thank you, Frank. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're happy to have you on the, the Real Entrepreneur podcast anytime you want to come back. Thanks, Isaiah. Awesome. Thanks a lot.